Hey everybody, this uh, little video I'm going to show you how you use cursors on this little scope to measure the amplitude and the uh, time of this particular waveform. So we have our waveform shown here, a little bit of a mess. Uh, let's clean that up a little bit. First thing I think we should do is move up to trigger and that green line is a trigger line. Let's move that into the uh, into the waveform someplace. We'll go threshold, use the left and the right arrow to adjust the trigger level and we'll move it to zero volts, right about the middle. And notice, you, you see, as long as the green line is within the bounds of the waveform, the waveform is nice and stable, beautiful. Next thing we want to do is see where zero volts actually is. So I'm going to disconnect my frequency for a second, ground it out, and if necessary, move up to YN and change the Y offset so the blue line is right about the center of the screen, just like it is right there. That's good. So now we're happy that that's zero volts is right in the middle of the screen. That's good. Go back, turn the frequency on, and there's our waveform again. Now at this point, we might like to adjust the amplitude of our waveform to get a, a bigger fit to the screen. That'll give you a more accurate measurements. So we'll go to Y ranges, and we'll just see how big we can make it. Yeah, it looks a little too big. It's off screen, so we'll leave it there. And let's go to our time base. Go to time base, and we will adjust it so we get a nice, uh, nice fit on the waveform on the screen. So you can see this is pretty good because we can see one full cycle here, and that's kind of what we're looking for. All right, now let's measure the amplitude and the the period of this waveform now to do that to measure the amplitude we'll go to yn and we'll select that and if the cursors are not on you choose high voltage cursors you can go left and right and you should see the cursors eventually show up at the top and the bottom that's great now we'll go up to cursor v1 and we'll move it down until it hits the top of the waveform that looks pretty good. And then we'll move to cursor V2 and we'll move it until we get to the bottom of the waveform. And that looks pretty good. So now at this point, you can see the top and the bottom. And over here, doesn't show up too well on the screen, it says 3.88 volts. So the change in voltage from peak to peak of this waveform from here to here is 3.88 volts. Now, let's have a look at the X uh, cursors. So we'll select that. Uh, the cursors don't seem to be visible, so let's turn on and off the hide cursor here. So we'll go hide TN, click on the right arrow until these two vertical cursors show up. Good. Now, let's go back to Cursor T1, we'll select Cursor T1, and we'll move the arrow until Cursor T1 is at zero crossing. I think I'm going to put it right in the middle, this middle zero crossing where the trigger is, right there. And we'll go to Cursor T2. And we're going to move it until it's one cycle. So from that cursor to that cursor, we can now see over here, 278 microseconds. So 278 microseconds from there to there. Uh, a fellow can invert this and get the frequency, but conveniently the frequency is already laid out for us right here, 3.60 kilohertz or kilocycles per second. There you go. That's how you use the cursors to make simple measurements.